Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I haven't done a video in a long time. I've been really busy, but I needed to at least do one so that um, it would be done and I could get it over with and get it up here. But um, something I get questions on a lot is how do I take my pictures? And so this video is just going to be a quick video on how we take, uh, you know, nice looking coil pictures. And so there's a few items that I use. Uh, to do that, I do everything with my cell phone, including taking this video. I have two phones <laughs> that I do that with. And um, basically I have a macro lens and also a stand uh, for setting the phone on just to get um, really still shots. And, and I have some different lighting. And I need to give a shout out to Squid Dude, Ryan, because uh, he helped me out a lot. And although... Um, and Jones End Builds as well on Instagram. Um, I got like some really cheap lighting that I picked up at Walmart, just some various lightings like that, and a cell phone with a macro lens that I got on Amazon. So it's not a super professional setup at all, but um, it works really well. And I'm just going to go over some different ways uh, to get real good shots, and hopefully you guys find it uh, useful somewhat. So that's it. I'll go ahead and. Uh, get started on it. We'll fade to black. Okay, so this was the first macro lens uh, that I purchased on Amazon. And I'll have a link down to these down in the description. But this was for the S4. Um, comes with a little lens cleaning kit. I'll just show you some of the stuff it comes with. So it came with uh, quite a few lenses. I only used two of them. Like this is for far away, which isn't really useful for coils. Um, comes with a stand, so you can put everything up on. It comes with a few different lenses, and when it comes in the mail, these are going to be screwed together. And so when I first got it, I was confused because I would take a picture with this and it's like a fisheye lens and there's this other one too um, which is like a wide angle or something so these were screwed together and to get the real macro photos you're gonna have to unscrew these back portions and this little guy in the back there is the macro lens and then the other one is a even closer up macro lens so so the wider the wider that the lens itself is, the closer up it's going to get uh, for the macro lenses. For the most uh, of my photos, I use this um, smaller one, which gives you a little bit farther away view, so you can get more of the coil uh, in the shot. And that just screws directly onto here. And I like these kinds that actually have a case that fits over your phone because it allows you to um, make sure that that lens is placed in the right spot. Like they have the clip kind that clip over the top. I wouldn't recommend those. I hear that they cause some black um, borders around your photos and kind of give a weird uh, vignette look. But yeah, the one that I'm currently using is for, I have one for the S6 and then also one for the S5. Um, and I probably could get to show you real quick here. Let me switch the camera view. All right. So let's say I've got something right here. And you have to get really close to be able to get the macro view. So that's probably uh, two inches away from what we're trying to take a picture of. And what I'm going to do next is I'll just get um, some coils and I'll set it up so that you can see exactly what I look at uh, when I'm taking my photos. Okay, so we got a coil here and um, the first I'll just go ahead and show you, if you don't have a macro lens, sort of the best way to get a photo of that. So here's just a regular cell phone. 
uh, with no macro lens. And you'll notice if you get in close and try to focus, it's like trying to focus on the background and stuff. Um, a good way to solve that is you can put like a white background behind it or a black background or something that the camera is not going to get confused and try to focus on because most of these cell phones they're going to have automatic focusing software running in there and so you just have to get to a, the right distance until it's able to focus and there we're maxed out you can't even see it on here um, Yikes. But yeah, a good way to get around that though is you could have the background or also one thing you can do because um, probably the main issue when working with this stuff is that you're going to have um, a difficult time getting this to stay uh, still enough. So, what I like to do is actually set the phone down so it has a stable surface. And then find your subject. Let's just move it so you can see it. And that way you're not shaking around a whole bunch. Make sure you get focused on the coil. And you should have a pretty clear shot of it. Let's just take a look. And you can get a pretty clear shot uh, without a macro lens. Um, as long as you just keep a couple things in mind. So lighting is really important. If you don't have enough lighting, you're going to get a real grainy appearance, especially with real up-close shots. Um, so just like a cheap lamp at Walmart helps a lot. And then you'll notice on this lamp, I actually have <laughs> it's just some printer paper taped over it. Uh, that cuts down on the sharpness and the glare that it'll cause with just having a light. Like I see a lot of people's photos and they're kind of washed out on their coils. They've taken, you know, just with their phone. And you can, it's usually because they actually use, will use the flash, um, you know, their phone's flash. And that's going to be a real hard LED light that is going to cause a lot of glare and so you can get the you know you can get the coil pretty close to the light source get your phone nice and stable let's take a look here So that's with a little bit extra better lighting. And then the original one, you can see kind of a little bit more of a grainy appearance to it. And that's 40 gauge wire, so I mean, without a macro lens, you're not really going to pick it up anyway. Um, but that's just an example of how lighting is going to help. And so let me show you next with the macro lens attachment, um, without a stand though. Alright, so I got went ahead and put the case on with the macro lens on there. Um, and again, I'll link to, you know, what I'm using down in the description. But you could just search Amazon for your phone model plus macro lens kit, and it should pop right up. So let's go back into the camera mode. And now that I have the macro lens on there, you'll notice that you can't, that everything is blurry. Um, unless you get in real close. Move that back just a tad, and there we go. And your focus feature on your phone will still work. Just like normal, the autofocus. You just have to get in close enough. And it gets, it's pretty hard without a stand, honestly. Like a lot of people do it. Um, but if you don't have a stand available, just try to get it in a position to where you can rest your hands because you want to minimize as much shaking as possible.
And another thing that helps is a lot of phones have a feature on them um, where you can go into the settings and they have a voice control and you'll notice I have mine on. Um, so what you can do with voice control is instead of pushing the button you can actually just say a command. So if I say shoot it takes a picture for me without me having to push the button because every time you hit that button you know it shakes the phone itself and can cause some jiggling. So it's nice especially with a stand because when you say shoot it actually moves you know your body vibrates a little bit as well so um, it helps a lot to have that stand uh, and I'll show you I'll just go ahead and get it going and show you how that works but let's just go ahead and open these up real quick and zoom in you can see that you can see a lot more detail even with that 40 gauge wire and with the right amount of lighting I mean that's just a simple one directional light and it makes a huge difference as far as the uh, quality of the photo even without a macro lens um, and I'll get more into some stuff that I learned from Ryan or Squid Dude uh, in just a second once we get into uh, you know the full setup okay and this is the stand that it's gonna come with if you get a macro lens with a stand um, available and I would recommend you do that um, it helps out a lot so with the stand we have is a little, you know, retractable claw deal that's going to fit onto the phone itself. And it holds it in place. Um, and then this portion is going to actually just screw onto the base here. And hopefully this will work for me. Alright, and then let's go ahead and go back into the macro mode. And that way, this will hold your camera in place while you get your photos. And this one is actually broken, so I don't even think it'll hold it up. Let me see if I can get it to at least stand still at a higher angle. that'll hold and then sometimes you'll have to add some stuff um, underneath your mod just to raise it up a little bit like maybe you have an extra box mod or something and that's what I'm going to use now to just raise it up see if we can't get it up to the angle that we need and then you can just adjust this should work for examples at least and then you can just bring it into view now if you have your coil at an angle like this um, it's gonna focus just on that one point and that's how that's how close up we are is that when you focus on the center of the coil the outside of the coil and that the far side and the near side of the coil are gonna be out of focus a little bit so if you want to get a nice clear shot of the whole coil, you're going to want to rotate it until that coil is totally parallel so you can get the whole thing in view. And just, you know, you can touch the screen to focus. And that's a little bit too close. There we go. And you get a nice up close view. Um, and then it comes in really handy because you're not touching anything once you get it focused. And then you can use the hands free shoot and take the picture. And the difference in quality, um, it's just, it's crazy. So you can get very, very close. You can see all the, well, I mean, you can, it's just extreme detail that you can see with it. Um, now as far as lighting goes this is all um, with you know I still have this overhead light here and I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and I'm going to turn off this other lamp I've got going over here
All right. So we got our coil back in the picture there. And focus. And as I add this other lamp in here, now if you just have one lamp, what you can do is you can get this lamp over here on this side, and then you can reflect it off. Like I just have a piece of paper here, and you can use that to reflect the light back onto the coil and get a nice soft. You can have a little bit more control over the direction of the light um, just with that paper and bring some brightness back onto it or you can put it above it or if you put it behind it it can get a nice contrast on there but what I'd recommend is just getting a second lamp that way you can set one up here and then you can bring the other lamp in from the other side from even down below and get a, a fuller picture of the coil and these are both hard lights this is an LED that I have over here and then over here is just a CFL bulb and they're both hard white um, which I prefer but another thing you could do is you can have a third lamp <laughs> you can never have enough lamps but you have a third lamp that you just add in um, from the bottom and it can add some depth to it and this is something that squid dude uh, let me in on you get a warm light and so this one is more of that yellow uh, kind of just regular incandescent bulb and you can get it from down below and then I mean I get I go a little bit crazy but then I like to actually I'll take a piece of paper and I'll stick it down below and then I'll reflect this incandescent, incandescent bulb and I use the paper to change the direction of it. So, shoot, you can get some really nice photos uh, just playing with different light sources, different colors of lights. And, you know, experiment with it. Um, there's no right way to do it in my opinion because you can come in straight on top and it changes the whole, whole photo. So, um, you know, I've never been trained in photography. It's probably obvious to people who have been trained in photography. <laughs> but uh, it works, you know, it works well. And you can really get all the details of your pictures. And uh, it helps out a lot, especially when you're trying to explain a build to somebody. And you can just show them, you know, a detailed picture and it's going to take care of it. And then for fire shots or, you know, glow shots, it's the same exact principle um, and what I would do for those is have a box mod you know like I have a Segeli 150 right here because if you have a mechanical mod and you're trying to push that button it's gonna be real difficult to hold it steady enough so that it's not shaking in the picture and fire shots uh, the main thing you want to be careful of is you don't want to melt your coil it's really easy to accidentally melt the coil because you're trying to get the picture and you're holding down the button way longer than you normally would. Um, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to go ahead and fire it. Shoot! And then you just wait till it's a nice shot and go ahead and hit the button. Um, another thing is I like to keep this uh, lighting coming in there while I'm doing my fire shots. That's way, That way it's focused on the actual coil and then once it gets up to temperature you can just shoot shoot a picture real quick and for example if I turn the light off and turn this light off and then try to do that same thing see the camera's all out of focus and then by the time it gets up to speed you have to hit focus again and then your coils like on the verge of melting so that's why I like to have the, you know, camera on. I mean, the lights on while I do my fire shots, because it's automatically gonna adjust for contrast once that gets up to 
the right temperature anyway and it starts getting red hot the camera will automatically adjust and while we're here also another thing is to make sure that the coil is right in the center of the field of view so if I because that's the center of the lens and that's where you're gonna have the most information visually available so if your coil is off center um, you're never going to get as good of a as clear of a picture in macro mode as you would if it were right in the center of the of the frame. So always try to get your coil right in the center of the lens at the right distance so that it's able to focus completely. There we go. Shoot. And when you get a real nice photo, you can usually tell before you even look at it. But yeah, so I hope that helps. Um, some nice ones here. And I hope you guys enjoy it. But yeah, that's my setup.